Hello YouTube, this is IDNO, and I'm here to bring you another episode of Advanced Redstone Circuits. So last time I showed you guys the... I finished up the ALU and I uh, went ahead and showed you some of its functions. Um, it was, you know, pretty simple, but hopefully you guys enjoyed that. I am going to take a break from that for the time being, um, because the next step from here would be to actually build a CPU. Uh, and I really don't want to do that right now. So um, for those of you who want to see that, I will do it eventually, uh, hopefully soon, but not at this point in time. Um, anyway, so today what I'm going to show you is uh, some circuits that are pretty cool. Um, these right here are, this is a parallel input and then output. And this is a serial uh, input and output. So this is actually uh, serial in, parallel out, and uh, parallel in, serial out. Or backwards, but yeah. Parallel in, serial out, serial in, parallel out. Uh, or SIPO and PISO for short. And basically what those do is uh, they take something like this, which is, let's go ahead and start, I'll show you guys an example. Um, you put in data like this on a parallel system, push a button, and it shows up on that board. Okay. Now this is cool and fine if you have a couple bits, you know, nothing too big, but the second it gets really, really big, it's really cumbersome to try and bust that many things. Um, I did a 4-bit system one time, and it was huge, you know, with parallel. It actually ended up being, uh, I turned it into an 8-bit serial system, and it was a lot smaller. So, I mean, this right here, you can see how this can be kind of convoluted and uh, messy. I mean, the timing's out of sync. You have to go in and adjust the timing for every single line so they're the same. So, over here, this is, this is you know, where the cool stuff happens. Um, and I, I built this, a lot of people are going to say that there are much smaller ways to do this. I know that, and I'm, I just built it this way for ease. Uh, this is a very simple system, and I'll show you exactly why uh, in a bit. So, anyway, uh, I'll go ahead and put in the same value over here. And you will notice that there is only a single piece of wire connecting these two things. So, let's go ahead and get that going. There we go. So, it is mirrored, but... Uh, we do have a perfect transmission from A to B um, using a single wire, and that's just so cool. So anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to uh, build this, um, starting with the encoder right over here. And uh, hopefully by the time I'm done with this, you guys will have a nice appreciation, appreciation of uh, how these things work. So... What we need first is a monostable circuit. That's not part of monostable. So, uh, this is a really simple design that apparently I can't make. But, uh, there we go. Okay. So, basically, what happens is when you put in input, this, that flashes. Okay. Now, that's going to be useful because in serial, what you have is an initial pulse. This pulse right here goes into the system and starts the whole thing. Uh, then you start send, receiving data. So um, that's, you know, kind of essential in how the whole system works. So let me just go ahead and uh, finish this, or start building this, uh, the rest of it. <laughs> and I'm going to work kind of fast because I don't want this to take too much time. Um, these things can get pretty big. So, all right. So the way this works is you've got input here, and I'm going to go ahead and put these on here so you guys can see the uh, the effects. So, input here, and then that goes into this block, which goes under here, powering this line. Okay, just a moment. Okay. So when that line is powered, it's obviously it sends it off into that uh, that system over there. So what this does is this keeps that line powered until we need to use it. So I'm going to go ahead and stack this because uh, I'm lazy, and there's really no reason for you guys to see me build it eight you know eight times. All right, uh, stack seven. Okay, now. You'll see, we do this. It's essentially the same as that one over there. Um, 
push the button and we got yeah see you later okay now let's go ahead and build the decoder in just a moment all right sorry about that so we've got uh, the encoder let's go ahead and do this decoder here Now this right here is um, the most important part of it, and it is, uh, I believe it's called a MUX. Uh, you'll have to not quote me on that one, because I could be wrong. Um, and basically what it does is, when it receives the initial pulse, it does this. I'll show you real quick, once I get it built. Okay, so once it gets the initial pulse, it, uh, moves this over, which then, as soon as it's over, it's ready to start receiving data from the actual machine. So, the initial pulse is, hey, I'm, I'm talking to you, listen to me, and then the system, you know, basically starts listening. Um, it's really compact for what it is, I mean, honestly. Um, I, I've seen some pretty nice ones, but usually they end up being a little bit bigger than this. So, um, and then this is actually what starts the saving process on the uh, these pistons over here. Um, for those of you who don't know what the uh, these are, um, they're actually something called a basal flop, which uh, is pretty cool. Let's see here. Okay. So, like that. Um, I'll show you guys exactly what a basal flop is in just a bit. Um, actually, while I'm building it. Oh, man. I am not doing well right now. Okay. I need you. Really? Really? Okay. Okay, let's go ahead and get that there. And just for output... Not that. Okay. Now we need another one of these right here. Uh, because this is two tick serial. Um, for some reason, the uh, system does not like to accept uh, two tick pulls. So this basically resets the whole thing. Yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and get that. I'm just going to do this to stack it. Okay, so now we go like this. Position one, and like this, position two, and stack seven. Haha, <laughs> that was easy. Um, okay, so now, what do we need? We need a reset. So, when that system, that initial system over here, sorry about that, that bump, guys. Uh, when that initial system over here kicks over here, you have to have a way to reset that. Um, this is the simplest way that I can think of to do that. So, you just, once that data is full, or finished going through, go like this. And, uh... Send it down that way, and it pulls it back. So, uh, let's go ahead and make sure it works. It should work, but, um... Yeah, it should work. Make sure I didn't mess up my timing here. It's entirely possible that I did mess this up, so. Oh, yep, we got something. What was that? Yeah, there we go. See? Messed it up. Alright, there we go. So we got data successfully. First three bits, and 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. There we go. Okay, so it works. Um, and this, like I said, this is not the smallest system. There are other systems that rely on uh, a glitch 
and I call it a glitch because it is a glitch uh, that does this right here. Um, I'm going to build a simplistic version of it just to show you, but uh, when you have a... Just a moment. All right, sorry about that. All right, when you have a uh, block that has a uh, piston with a block on it. Yep, I did that too fast, sorry. Piston with a block on it, and that piston receives a uh, pulse that's shorter than, I think, uh, four ticks. Then what it does is drops the block. So, um, I mean, that's that's cool, but I really don't like building with it because it just... It honestly feels glitchy to me. It's just like bud switches, in my opinion. I don't like I don't like them at all. Um, they have their purposes, but I don't like building them in circuitry because they're stupid. <laughs> all right. A lot of people will say that they like them, and that's fine. You're you know you're welcome to use them. I just don't like to. So uh, anyway, so we've got this. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I was going to show you guys how to make a basal flop. This is a uh, type of D flip flop that's in there. Um, you guys saw it being used, but I just want to actually build it for you just so we can, uh, you guys can get an understanding of what the circuits on the inside of this thing work, or how they work, uh, why they work, stuff like that. Ah, that needs to go up more. And okay, so what happens here is you've got a storage cell right there, and um, when power goes onto this line of any kind, so say we're to power it like this, it's going to remember that because uh, the line is powering itself, basically, the, you know, with the repeater. So um, these are incredibly handy for storage systems, like memory systems, stuff like that. Um, I like to use them a lot. Uh, so anyway, so the way these work is you power it here. Let's say this one is a 1, store that. This one is no longer a one. Store that. So, uh, and basically it works on this powering into here and this repeater keeping the signal uh, for longer than it takes for this one to pull up. And then when there's no signal going into here, uh, this comes down and cuts the signal. And even though, you know, that's storing it, um, this pinches the signal off like this, um, no longer producing power down here. So. It's really ingenious, and the guy who built it, uh, built and designed it, um, his name is uh, Basil Shep, and uh, or Basil Shep, I don't really know, um, but he is a genius with redstone. Um, he's one of the uh, the gurus on our server, and um, he just he's built some pretty amazing things. So, um, yeah. Anyway, I think that should be it for this episode. Um, if you've got any questions or comments, just go ahead and leave them in the uh, box below. Um, as always, thanks for watching, and you guys have a wonderful day.